Good morning, <coughs> Mark Mulligan, uh, here to talk a little bit about eBay business and the Craigslist business. And, uh, you know, of course you all know that I'm more involved in the golf equipment business, used reselling golf equipment, but we do a lot of other things too. So I want to talk a little bit about what we did this week and how things are going and um, some thoughts on, on the eBay business. Uh, it's been really kind of exciting. Um, the sales have been phenomenal, especially with our bread and butter stuff and our used clubs. And uh, we are selling a lot of used clubs off of Craigslist, but also on eBay. Uh, usually Craigslist, I do full sets of clubs. So I will put together a bag with uh, everything in it. And then we sell it uh, for a real competitive price so that people can buy them for their daughters and their wives. And guys, Last like last night, I uh, saw a guy, he drove in four and a half hours from Holbrook. Arizona because he wanted three Callaway Woods, old vintage woods that I had, the Warbirds, the Big Berthas, and he wanted them for his uh, set of clubs. He asked me to hold them and I did and sold them uh, those set, that whole set of uh, woods and he was delighted. Now he's got his full set and he's starting to play with his grandkids and also his uh, son and so he feels pretty good. He also bought another set as a backup. So if his wife wants to play or whatever they can. And so again, the game of golf is a phenomenal um, social event too, that you can uh, not necessarily have to be a good golfer to enjoy the game. But I'll show you a few things that we got this week. Um, it's been kind of neat. Uh, we, one of the things I was really excited about getting, this is a Claret jug look-alike sort of and of course like I mentioned to you I reposition things this is a pot that um, somebody will use for whatever they use it for but I position it as a trophy and most of you probably know that the British Open the Claret jug is the trophy so everybody wants to have the Claret jug and then they also drink their wine or whatever scotch out of it and so this here is going to be really cool. You know, we'll put it on for 50 bucks. This is going to be a long tail item. So somebody that has a golf tournament or whatever kind of event is going to want something that represents the Claret Jug. So this is pretty cool. Another thing we got was, of course, a couple of these. The Thinker. Uh, this is um, Ravel, I think, is the guy that ended up um, inventing this but a lot of people like this on their desk gets them to be kind of thinking uh, in the right direction and um, of course I don't know if you ever remember the show Dolby Gillis uh, he always was over by the, the thinker statue thinking about what he was going to do with his life and he usually kind of goofed it up all the time. Um, another thing that we bumped into and my daughter has a bunch of these and we're going to sell them. These are the Beanie Babies and she has hundreds of them and we're going to put them on. I mean they're sitting in baskets. Now these Beanie Babies you need to know that some are worth some money but the generally most of them are worth around five bucks. You know if that. And so uh, you put them on they're kind of a commodity. They're not um, you know necessarily a long tail item unless you do have um, something that is um, rare. So another thing I got was an old Timex watch. And I got, it's really neat, it's working, and uh, just a beautiful watch. Got it for a couple bucks at Savers. It was buck day. And uh, so I got that. Another thing was a copper bracelet. Beautiful engraved, uh, locally engraved bracelet. Uh, just beautiful and so that's there we got uh, something from my old state a North Dakota hat with a couple toothpicks on it so this is kind of the classic uh, North Dakota hat and of course us North Dakotans all love our toothpicks so we kind of make sure we do that here also is a really nice base beautiful shape I'm gonna market this also as kind of a trophy and it could be for a Greek 
um, fraternity or sorority kind of event. Uh, it could be given to someone to uh, honor their c contributions to their um, school or whatever, or even a golf event, but that'll go there. Another neat thing, and of course in Arizona we have a lot of Indian kinds of figurines, and uh, we, so we bought this. It's really pretty. It's a Indian princess with a deer she's holding, and um, so you know I try to stay close, mostly to the golf arena. But if you can find something that's unique, you want to buy it. So for example, here's a turkey hat, and I'll probably end up being wearing this Thanksgiving unless I can get it sold. So I'm going to try to get it sold. But you know, you gotta have something unique once in a while. Another thing here is, here's another big dog shirt. This is a 4X shirt, beautiful shirt. And this shirt here, uh, again, this is one of our bread and butter items like I've told you about where we buy shirts and uh, most of them are kind of higher end, but you're getting them for a couple bucks, you know, at the most, three, four bucks. You put them online and they're a commodity, no question and you maybe sell them for 10, 15 bucks. But if let's say you sell 50 to 60 of them a month, well that's five, six hundred dollars. And that is just kind of a bread and butter item. Other things that we buy are long t tail items and they might be things that you put on and you know you're gonna have them for a long time until that right buyer buys them or wants it and so you put them at the higher price because they're rare so I mean this like this cleric jug 50 maybe even hundred dollars I might put this at because I have never seen one like this before so these are the things that you want to look at but you need cash flow so you know you we buy the clothes here's another one really neat uh, this is kind of a chef shirt it's a uh, 3x and uh, beautiful just black uh, kind of a thing and um, we, as I've told you we go for the higher sizes so that's sort of what we do. Also got this really nice stereo. It's an oldie but a goodie. It's a Panasonic. It plays CDs, cassettes, uh, and has an FM AM radio. I'm actually going to keep this because what I am doing is starting to sell uh, cassettes and so I paid 10 bucks for this at a garage sale and it works perfectly and of course what's kind of neat about that is look at this I got a whole case full of cassettes and so I need to test them to make sure they're doing okay and one of the things that I am going to sell is a lot of audio books so for example here's Brian Tracy I mean most of you know him as a business guru marketing guru and this is called The Laws of Business Success. And here's another one, um, Napoleon Hill's A Year of Growing Rich. And I think you probably remember Napoleon Hill. He wrote a book, Think and Grow Rich. And this is a follow-up. Here's a tape. Uh, fantastic. Here's another one, Stan Davis, Blur. This is a marketing tape. But I probably have a couple hundred of these tapes. And when you go out and you buy them, you think that people don't want them. They do. Because, you know, they can listen to their, they all have their cassettes. Or they might even change them, teaching your children values. Uh, Selling the Invisible, this is by Henry Beckwith. And um, making, a, making a Life Billion, Mark Avalon. Here's Robert Kawasaki, Retire Young, Retire Rich. And so, you know, again, these business books, you go to these garage sales and you'll be able to buy hundreds of them. Here's one of my favorite books that I listened to many times, Herb Cohen, Negotiating the Game. You know, he was a great negotiator. And here's uh, another one, the, uh, the 11 Immutable Laws of Internet Branding, Al Reese and Laura Reese. So anyway, you know, if you get a chance to buy something like that so you can listen to these tapes yourself or resell them. Now, these things here, 
will sell for good money because people love the audio. And, um, you know, they listen to them in their cars or if they have a cassette player anymore. Um, it's sometimes hard to transfer them into your iPod. Uh, so that's why you want to try to get uh, a stereo that will take care of that. Another thing I want to talk about a little bit today, more pertaining to golf. Today I want to talk a little bit about our business plan. And our business plan is primarily to help the beginning golfer get started, the wo beginning woman golfer, um, the person that is going to have their daughter start golfing and they want to get them a decent set of clubs but not something so expensive so that they feel guilty if the person doesn't want to play anymore. I think most of you probably watched uh, Jordan Spieth this week kind of collapse uh, at the Masters. And he, of course he had a five shot lead going into the uh, back nine. And he, his swing wasn't quite there and he ended up losing. And that's why golf has to be taken for what it is. And I've told you many, many times that I have met many friends, done many business deals, and uh, have enjoyed golf to the fullest. Not necessarily because of my competitive game, but because of having three, four hours outside, uh, enjoying my time with my um, oh, father-in-law and father and kids and, and friends and look, my old high school mates that you've been seeing. So it's been fantastic. So I put together sets of golf um, golf sets that are pretty reasonable so people can afford them and um, and they'll come and I can make some a little money on it and I usually buy the older clubs I'm not worrying about you know the last five years of clubs because they're pretty expensive still I mean they're you know three four hundred dollars for a set of irons anymore so you I can sell a full set of clubs with the bag for seventy five dollars and still make a little money and the, the customer loves it. So one thing we talk about today is a little bit about putters. So people wonder, you know, geez, what kind of putter should I buy if I'm gonna resell it and that kind of thing. And there are hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of putters. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because uh, a lot of times I get people asking me, Mark, what kind of putter should I buy, blah, blah, blah. Now, this is called a blade bullseye putter. This putter was hot in the 70s, late 60s. Ben Crenshaw and I think even Johnny Miller and um, oh, um, Weiss, even Tom Watson and all of them use this putter. It's Some of them still play it, but it's a blade and... Uh, this putter sells, but it's not a, this happens to be a belly putter, so it's a long one. But this putter here, if you were gonna buy a putter for your wife or for somebody, what you really wanna do is get in towards the ones that are more looking like a paint. And here's, here's a bear tracker. This is a golden bear, this is Jack Nicklaus. But you can see it actually has an insert in it and these are the hot putters. These are the putters that are sort of ubiquitous. So I would recommend, if you're gonna sell golf clubs to beginners, to give them this kind of club. And they're all over the place. I mean, heck, Wilson has one. Here's a pro staff putter. They all have, they're all have a knockoff, but they all work the same. I use one like this. I, I use a ping that I've had for years and that kind of thing. Now, another hot putter out there is the mallet putter. This is a zebra, and these putters came out. A lot of people still use them. They usually have an insert, uh, but this is the mallet. And this is considered a half mallet putter. And so those are putters too that you can buy. But again, you know, the, probably the golfer that's played for a while, he's going to uh, play with that. Another putter that's really hot these days is the ball putters. So they, they call them two balls and one ball. 
and so uh, the Odyssey putters, they have a golf ball like image on the top. So then when you put the putter down, you're basically lining golf balls up and then they help you stroke and bring that club to back and forth in a straight line. So they are a hot club also, if, so if you ever want to get a two ball. This is a great putter also, and this is a big bladed putter. You can see how large it is. This is a slot line, and um, there's many, many putters. Uh, Jack Nicklaus used to putt with a putter similar to this. It was even longer than this. And um, I think that's the putter he used in 86 to win the Masters, you know, when he was up there in age. This is a great putter also. Uh, get a little bigger one that people can understand. So this is just a basic blade putter. This is, is a putter that is, uh, you know, similar to the bullseye, but it has a little weight on the back so that there's some force that comes through it, a lower uh, gravity. And here's another hot putter. These are the, the putters. This is actually an Excalibur, but they have weights in the front here that you can put in, and then you can adjust the putter so that it, when it goes down into the ball, it gives you a little more momentum. And these are very hot right now. Taylor Made makes a Rosso putter similar to that. But if you again are going to start buying clubs for your kids or your grandkids or whatever, I'd start out with a ping knockoff putter, just a basic putter like this. And they're all over the place, and they would start uh, to work pretty well with that. So. That's kind of what is going on today. I, I, I did want to talk to you a little bit about, again, the eBay business. Um, we're finding that um, we have a lot of sales with, say, shirts, the commodity stuff, and the golf clubs. Some of our long tail stuff is taking a little longer to sell than, you know, we thought it would. But again, you have the product. You, pay, you paid a buck or two for it, and you got it online for $25, $50, maybe even $100. And so at some point, if you have the patience, that stuff will sell. We sold some stuff this week that we've had online for a couple of years. And a couple more masks. We had these masks, these African masks, and they sold for 75 bucks. So don't get frustrated and start discounting stuff, especially stuff that's unique. Now, a shirt that, you know, there's millions of them online, maybe you got to do that. But uh, as far as stuff that you, that's rare or one of a kind, just hang tight. It will sell, and that could be a residual income for you. So again, I uh, just wanted to make sure that you guys are uh, brought up to, ba up to date. And um, you know, we'll do another one, and I'll show you what's sold uh, soon uh, off of my website. Take care.